Hi guys, Steve Langard here again. Hey, you know, recently I've had an interest, a growing interest in big bore rimfire cartridges and rifles. So the early, you know, the mid, mid to late 1800s, early cartridge period. And I kind of got curious about uh, the possibility of reloading an original rimfire cartridge. Now I've been making some reloadable rimfire cases. I think some of you have probably seen my videos on that. Uh, but I saw this product uh, online called Primal, which is a kit that comes with four different powders, and you can see them here. Uh, and it's and you combine them in a in a certain way, uh, it creates a priming compound for repriming. It's designed for doing 22s and uh, and 20 uh, center fire primers. Um, but I thought, yeah, I wonder if I could use that to reprime an original copper. Uh, larger bore uh, rimfire cartridge case. So I looked through my my original cartridges and uh, assorted stuff and I found a, a small bag of 38 rimfire cartridges and about five or six of them. All of them had been attempted to be fired at some point. You can see a, a, a firing pin mark on them. But there was one empty case also and I thought yeah maybe I'll try to reprime that one just to see what happens. So, uh, so I, I, I took that case and this is it. And first, I, I ran it through my ultrasonic cleaning tank. Focus, no, it's a 38 rim fire. And I ran it through two cycles of the ultrasonic tank to clean it out, try and get all the, the powdered residue that was in there. It looks like someone had pulled the bullet and dumped the powder out, but there was still residue and, and junk in there. So two cycles through the, re, the ultrasonic cleaner, we did a really good job of cleaning it out. I was really surprised. But I also took a, a straight pin I don't know how well you can see this, but I took a straight pin and I bent the last quarter inch of it or so uh, 90 degrees so I can use that as a scraper to get down and scrape out the hollow rim in there. Well, I did that and really nothing else came out. But I think the ultrasonic tank did a really good job of cleaning it out. So, but this is a uh, an unfired one. So this is just kind of showing what we're playing with here. So I took this, uh, I got I ordered this Primal kit and uh, the directions tell you how to mix it for reloading a 22 or a center fire primer. Well, one of the problems with large bore rim fire cartridges is one that they take a lot more priming compound because you have a much larger perimeter of that rim, 360 degrees around that you need to have priming compound in. So I didn't really know how much to make in here. So I, I, you know, I made a probably a little bit more than I needed, but I mixed these four powders together as indicated by the instructions. Uh, and then after they were mixed, uh, they kind of come up into a brown, or I'm sorry, a gray kind of powder. And that's a little bit of some of it was mixed earlier. And, uh, and then I use, it comes with a, a little scoop that has two different size scoopers. So I took a, basically a small scoop of it, put it into the cartridge case, and then I used a little bit of acetone, which I put in a little bottle with an eyedropper and put a couple drops of acetone down into the case with the powder and that creates a slurry and kind of so I mix that up a little bit and then uh, what I did is I took the empty case and I chucked it in a cordless drill like this so the base was down and then I ran the cordless drill and that spun the case and using centrifugal force you know, the idea is to fling that slurry that priming compound out to the outer perimeter out to the rim so I ran it for about 30 seconds or so to sling it all the way out. And then I set the case aside to, to dry so for the acetone to evaporate. So once I was done, I waited overnight, just let it dry completely. I turned the case upside down and dumped out any loose, prim the loose uh, uh, priming compound that was in the case that wasn't up into the rim. And plus I took a little end of a Q-tip, uh, cut one end of it off so I had a little cardboard stick and just kind of used that to try to pack it into the... Uh, into the rim a little bit. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now with it. So uh, the point of this video is to try it out and see if it will actually work. Whether it's going to fire, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm not holding my breath, but uh, but we'll see. So what I've done is I made a little jig. I don't have a 38 rim fire gun of any kind to try it in. So I took a piece of scrap square tubing I had and I bored a, uh, a hole, 375 hole in it. And so I'm going to set the case down in here and I'm going to hit it with a hammer and a punch. So I'm just going to put it back here in the vise. Let 
Okay, so let me move this stuff out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to put my safety glasses on. So, I'm going to take this primed case, I'm going to put it upside down, down in this hole, and then my firing pin and hammer, and we're going to hit it and see if it goes off. So I'm going to set this on the rim. And I'm going to act like a firing pin. Let's see what happens. Wow. <laughs> it worked. Got a nice puff of smoke out of it, and it blew it off. And as you can see, you can see here down in the bottom, it's it's all got a, a bit of soot in there from it firing. So, uh, Hey, it worked. That's pretty neat, isn't it? You can see the, the firing pin dent in it I made. It's a pretty good size firing pin. You know, some rifles have a larger firing pin than, than others. And then there's, you know, some of the revolvers have a small pin too. So I've got a four, a four barrel um, Remington Elliott uh, pistol that has a very small um, firing pin in it. Uh, and then um, my Ballard 44 rifle has a really good heavy hitting big big uh, big hammer nose that hits it really good so uh, But anyway, I'm pleased that worked it fired uh, So it does show that this priming compound can be can be used to uh, Reload an original copper rim fire case. So if you're interested in trying it um, You find this on the internet. This is the the product called Primal. Uh, I got no connection with it uh, but it's about $20 uh, on the internet and uh, they give you a pretty good supply of, of the compounds to mix together. So anyway, that was kind of a neat, interesting little experiment. So I'm glad it worked out. So uh, maybe in the future, if I find uh, something I, unique that I want to try, just load one, reload one, and uh, I might just do that. So, okay, folks, thanks for watching. Bye.